Okay. Uh, hello, um, everyone. This is Adam again. Um, I'm going to do another presentation on VMAP planning techniques, uh, this time on a head and neck case with um, three different dose levels, 5412, 5940, and 5996. And again, I'm going to follow the, the same process that um, Cesar is uh, teaching in the curriculum. And um, it's uh, supposed to be a pretty efficient method uh, to get a quality plan in the end. Again, I'm going to use two arcs here. I'll talk about a, a couple of things that you can use um, maybe on different systems, uh, not necessarily just a clip. The same principle should be able to be transferred to other systems. <clears throat> uh, so the first thing I want to do is um, turn off these themes. I'll just show you the contours that I've created. Uh, so let me turn everything off. Some of these contours are from other planners, um, but I'll go over um, the contours that, that I've made for this plan. All right, so there are the PTVs. This yellow is 5412. Uh, this blue here is 5940. And then these two other PTVs are uh, 6996. <clears throat> So the first thing, as has been explained on um, a few of the other planning videos, is we need to separate out these PTVs so that we have actual <coughs> correct uh, DVH metrics. Um, so, for example, this 5412, if I subtract out the other PTVs, now this is actually the DVH that I'm worried about with 5412. I don't want to include higher PTV um, volumes in there because it will skew the DVH and make it look better than it actually is. So this is what we're actually analyzing, the DVH of only the 5412 structure. structure. And you would do the same with overlap of uh, any other structures. Okay, so I can't hear the 5940 DVH. You can see that it's subtracted out this higher PTV. So this is the actual DVH volume that we're worried about. <clears throat> so that's the first thing is to separate out your actual DVH structures. The next is, um, again, that I will use max uh, dose structures. So I will not create rings around my higher PTVs. Um, the way that I get dose fall off from one PV from a higher PTV inside of another PTV is just by having a maximum dose set on the lower PTV. So if I go to, for example, 54 max, so I show this volume, you can see that it's two millimeters away from PTV 59.4 and I think about five millimeters away from PTV basically 70. And so again, I, I use the mathematical rules of thumb. So <clears throat> PTV 54 divided by PTV 70, 77%. Okay, so that's about, <clears throat> so we're looking at about a 25% uh, drop off. So 25% divided by about a 5% per millimeter drop off gives you five millimeters. And that's why I've done five millimeters. So because you've got drop off all around a structure, approximately 5% per millimeter fall off, it needs to drop 25% from this dose level to this dose level. So I've given a margin of five millimeters. The same concept for PTV 59.4, 54 divided by 59.4, 90%, so you need about a 10% drop off, 10% divided by 5% per millimeter, 2 millimeters. So that's why I've got a 2 millimeter margin between PTV 59.4 and PTV 54. 
So it's these little gaps. When I put maximum dose constraints on this, it should confine the dose around this PTD. Again, I have a maximum dose constraint on this volume, and it should confine the high dose just within this area. And that's instead of using rings. And, and it really allows me to not have hot spots anywhere in my anywhere in my PTVs because my high dose areas should just be in this area between my high dose PTV and my maximum dose PTV. I would create a similar maximum structure here between PTV 59.4 and PTV 69.96. Let's do that. 59.4 max. Again, this will confine dose to this high dose area just here. All right, and as has been done on a previous demonstration, I make these edges contours. Okay, so again, the optimizer, as I'm using rings and my normal tissue objective to push dose down all around, and their closer organs at risk, um, I'm pushing dose at the edges of these contours all the time. So the optimizer is going to have to work harder around the edges to maintain that dose. So if I know that ahead of time, I can predict um, that it will have a more difficult time just in these areas, just around the edges. So I make this edges contour or a rind um, contour of my more complicated PTV. I don't see the need to do it on these higher dose PTVs because they're inside already a wash of dose. It's not going to be real tough to get dose into these edges. Um, but I will struggle here next to all of this area where I'm pushing dose down. Uh, the next thing, as has been discussed before, is this corners contour. So again, uh, the optimizer is going to struggle a little bit more at these corners of, of this PTV. And so I know ahead of time, let me just put in a little contour here. I'll help boost some dose into this area because I know it's going to be a little bit more difficult on the optimizer. And again, a small volume is going to be a lot easier to, for the optimizer to focus on than a large volume. And so I just sort of make an educated guess of where I want. There's no real right or wrong, just a little extra boost for the optimizer to focus on, just these sort of corners areas. Okay. And then, so in this case, I wanted to just use two arcs, and I wanted to be uh, pretty efficient in terms of delivery of my plan. And so what I've done is, but I don't want beams to go through my shoulders. So there are a number of ways to do this on different planning systems. On this, uh, what I've done is I've contoured shoulders, sorry, let's find it. I've contoured shoulders plus a margin. Maybe my margin could have been a little bit bigger superiorly, but the idea is that I'm teaching this principle. Um, so it, the structure can be modified in, in sort of any way. So I've got this, and I don't want beams really coming through here or here. Shoulders can can move um, quite a bit from day to day. There are you know, some reasons that we just would want beams coming through these shoulders. Um, but this is also air, right? So my optimizer is going to struggle um, to, if I put a dose limit on this portion in air, well, it's not going to get much dose because it's air, so you can still have a big fluid through here. I want to prevent any fluid through this air portion because the shoulders could move into this area. So what I've done is something similar to what you would do on, say, chest wall or breast planning, but just for different reasons. I made this shoulders minus body contour. I did a density override uh, to uh, tissue density. And now, uh, when in my optimizer, I limit dose to this whole area. Um, any photon fluence that comes through this tissue um, is going to produce dose, and I can I can heavily lower the photon fluence here. Now there are.
are some optimizers, uh, for example, a newer version of, of uh, Eclipse, for example, where you can do avoid entries through a uh, contour. So in that case, in the optimizer, I would just have the shoulders contour. No need to worry about a density override. And I would just hit a check mark somewhere in the optimizer that says, don't, en don't let beams enter through this shoulder contour. And that would do it perfectly. Um, but this is just a different approach. Again, the idea is that you take what tools that you have and you make it work for um, um, your planning system. Now, uh, the one thing is, this is not actually what's on the patient. So before I did a final calculation for my patient, let's say this is my final treatment plan, I would copy and paste this plan on the original data set without this density override um, so that my fluence is actually on the correct patient data set without this extra um, density. Sort of a similar procedure that, that we would do on um, or could do on breast or chest wall planning, um, but we'll get to that later. Adam, just a comment. Yeah, sure. That you mentioned some, you mentioned that uh, there are some treatment plannings that you can do avoidance of structure, but also you can do avoidance arcs uh, as, uh, as sectors. You can, I don't know, there are so many treatment planning systems out there that there are different methods to avoid something. Like, right, right. They yeah, are, very keeping out or avoiding extraction or like the method that you're showing now. Yeah, which is great. And then the next thing I'll look at are my ring structures. Um, so I'll do one ring for all my PTVs. So again, what I want is just a ring with a little bit of separation from my PTV so that I don't have conflicting arguments with lower dose, higher dose, um, basically abutting the same voxel. So I put a little gap. And I just make sure that this gap is appropriate for all dose levels of, the, of, the, of my PTVs. So for example, I think this is one millimeter away from 54, three millimeters away from um, PTV 59 and five millimeters away from PTV 70. And this is done by the same concept of 5% per millimeter. Um, so that's the concept of these rings. Now I've done, in this case, I didn't have to, but I did two separate rings. I did a, a ring low that's just where the shoulders are being blocked. So it stops here. Just because this is going to be, because all my beams are going to be coming more anteriorly and posteriorly, more ATPA like. So I may have extra spillage of dose here. And I don't want the spillage of dose where I know it's going to be here to affect spillage of dose up here. So I, I just separated two different rings. You could probably get a, a very good plan even without doing that. Um, that way it can focus a little bit more in any spillage of dose right here where I'm expecting won't cause my optimizer to get confused and allow dose to spill out up here where I don't want it to spill. So I just did two separate rings. And then I'll do a ring two. And sometimes I'll use ring two, sometimes I won't even use it. Um, but this one, ring two, abuts ring one. And each ring is one cm big. So again, this ring is, um, so again, I'll use about 5% per millimeter, give or take. I'll put a maximum dose constraint at about 65% on this one. And about 85% of PTV 59.4, um, because that's three millimeters away from 59.4. All right, so those are my rings. Then we'll just take a look at organs at risk in this case. So, so again, I would use the same for something like spinal cord, which is just a small organ at risk close to um, PTVs. 
I would use the idea of 10% per millimeter. So if my spinal cord were really close to say a PTV 59.4 here, then I would say, let's say my spinal cord constraint is 45 divided by 59.4. That's um, about a 25% fall off that I would need. So anywhere between five and 10% per millimeter um, somewhere around there is what your dose fall off is going to be. Um, let's say it's like 7% per millimeter. So 25% divided by 7. You'd need 3, 4 millimeters in order to ensure that you had dose fall off between your spinal cord and a PTV 59.4. So if your PTV 59.4 is coming closer than that, I would go ahead and cut it out um, directly. That way I can optimize because I know I'm not going to be able to cover PTV 59 closer than that, and my spinal cord would take precedence. Same sort of concept I would do with optics. So if I had optics involvement, my optics take priority um, over my PTVs, and I would do a similar um, um, concept using that somewhere between 5 and 10% per millimeter dose fall off, and I would cut out my PTVs. So I can still cover my PTVs in my optimizer, and I get those nice sharp shoulders. Um, but I'm sparing my organs at risk. Okay. In this case, I didn't have to do it, but the information is there. Let me turn on the rest of my structures here. Okay, and I've got these expansion structures here. Um, E representing expansion. These are just three millimeter margins on some of my organs at risk. Uh, there's a posterior neck in case you want to lower dose even more back here if your rings and your NTO are not doing the trick. Okay, so we'll look through here. We've got um, our submandibular um, uh, uh, here and here. This is right next to PTV 70. This is PTV 59, uh, 54. So we'll get them as low as we can. Our parotids abutting just PTV 54. And we'll get those as low as we can. Let me turn my rings off. Okay. Our mandible looks like it's just barely entering PTV 54, nothing higher. So we should keep our mandible pretty close to, to 54 gray max, maybe 55 gray. So something to be careful about with your mandible, um, especially if your mandible is entering your higher doses. Let's say my mandible were entering PTV 70. Now there's a, a very thin therapeutic window for these head and neck cancer patients, right? So we're, we've escalated dose all the way at the 70 gray, yet our organs at risk are sort of nearing tolerance on all of these. And so our mandible is already at, um, you know, a, a high tolerance, right? Um, getting, uh, getting around 70 gray max dose. Um, something to think about even further is if you're using Acuros, like I am in this case, and there should be a presentation on, on Acuros. Um, but because Acuros gives dose to tissue rather than dose to water, uh, the mass energy absorption coefficient ratios are such that uh, when you calculate the same fluence, if you have the same photon fluence on this CT set, and you calculate in AAA, and you calculate in Acuros, um, on that same fluence, the dose to bone would be about 5% lower. Um, so what happens is, if I'm calculating Acuros and I have full fluence, that means if I were to calculate uh, that on AAA, the AAA bone would be about 5% higher. Um, so just something to be careful about. Um, if I'm using Acuros, I'm going to be extra careful, um, for example, with my mandible near hot areas. I know there are some doctors that are even okay with having cold spots up to 5%. In mandible because they're going more by historical mandible tolerances and are a little bit worried about that difference. Just a little side note about planning. In this case, we won't have a problem because it's just this um, PTV 54, nothing higher. And keep 
going down. Not a lot of structures to worry about in this case. Here's my oral cavity. I'll be able to spare this nicely. The larynx is right in the middle of BTV 70, 59.4, and 54. I'm not going to have any sparing on this. Uh, brachial plexus, they just, one of them just barely enters BTV 54. Uh, you know, so I'll keep these nice and low. They're not going to a high enough BTV that I really need to worry about these much. And my spinal cord and brain stem are far enough away that they're going to be okay as well. And same with my cochlea up here. So it should be a fairly simple plan. <clears throat> now we'll look at the beam arrangement. I'll turn off everything except for my PTVs. And okay, so if I look at it in beam's eye view, rotate it, I want to cover soup and imp. It's okay if I miss some laterally. Typically, I'll skew it asymmetrically so that I at least cover one side, the full arc. Like this side, I almost fully cover. And then on the next arc, I'll cover this side, just slightly asymmetric in this case. And I'll look at the other arc. I've got 20 degrees um, collimator rotation. I can slightly modify this collimator rotation depending on if I need to cover a little bit more, if there's a, looks like a better angle that might um, help out. But again, it doesn't matter that I'm sort of missing. I'm sticking at about, uh, actually this one can increase. Yeah, I'm sticking to around, um, I'd like to be less than about 16 for this. So again, because the MLCs can only travel something like 15.6. CM, no, I'm sorry, 14.6 CM across. Um, you can push it a little bit higher than that. I wouldn't go more than about a CM. Otherwise, you'll, you can start having some weird things happen. If MLT is not being able to go all the way across, it's still trying to optimize. So this, this looks pretty good now. So I'm happy with my beans. and I am ready to optimize. Okay, so as I've done on the, my previous planning video on the pelvis, got my CTVs 100%, usually about a gray higher. Um, all my PTVs start at a priority of 200. Um, I've got these little structures here, which just will let me show what my actual dose is, so I don't put any weighting on them. So just let me see when I get to 100% coverage. <clears throat> if you don't have this actual dose being shown, then you can just look at your DVH and, and use this as a, you can just visualize when it's fully covered. In my certain case, you'll see I'll, I'll get actual doses here relative to this percentage. So it's just a, a visualization structure. My other
other CTV 59 and 100% um, being one gray higher, 59.40 is at 6040. My GTVs, one gray higher. <clears throat> um, again, I've got this visualization thing for my D95. I want it to be prescription dose. Um, turn on a few of my other PTVs. I'll do 100% on my PTVs at prescription, 98% at about a half gray higher. Again, all my PTVs at 200. My PTV 70 has a max of 3% higher. And then my 100% at prescription, 98% at half a gray higher. I put in this 5% hotspot. This is 5% hotspot at 5% here, just as a, a visualization. No waiting on there. Um, I put constraints on all my, um, all these structures that I made, my DVH structure, my edges. Uh, this is something I didn't show earlier. I, I can view it here, just to, so I don't have to flip back. And I'll just show you this concept as we plan. Let me turn on my right carotid. Actually, there are two things I did show. Okay, so I've got a right parotid expanded by five millimeters and cut from the PTV by three millimeters. This expansion just helps it instead of being too sort of V-shaped in my dose fall off. It makes it a little bit wider dose fall off, which actually helps my parotid dose. Um, this three three millimeters difference, um, again, I'll put maximum dose at 85%, 5% per millimeter. And, uh, <clears throat> and then um, no conflicting argument. I don't have to use this. I could have just optimized on the parotid only. As you'll see, I'll optimize only on my submandibular, not not a Boolean operator. It does equally as well. So both are viable options um, in this in this planning process. But something else that I've done. So <clears throat> let's say I'm optimizing and I see, okay, I'm just not going to be able to reach my constraint for my parotid of mean of 26 gray in my case. Let's say that's what my doctor wanted. And my doctor said, okay, if you can't meet mean of 26, <clears throat> I'll allow you to cut away from PTV and as long as you still cover CTV, all right? So that would be sort of a, a replan or if I or if I let my PTV in my optimizer, I say, okay, PTV, you can have less dose. Well, it won't know to just put less dose here. It'll put less dose here and here. It'll scatter it through and I don't know where that less dose on my shoulder is. Um, and I wanted to just focus on just less dose here. So what I've done is made a couple structures and I'll show you how this works during the planning process. <clears throat> I've got um, this. This is a PTV structure, just this. This is just at the boundary of the parotid going to the CTV. In this example, you could do it one millimeter slices at a time. This is a few millimeters. And so I'll put an objective to cover this PTV. And my edges, if you look at my 54 edges, they go around it, right? So let's, uh, sorry, go up here. Here's my edges contour here which is missing this portion of the PTV, which is right where that parotid PTV is. So what I can do is, I'm missing dose here, I'm missing dose here. Well, all of a sudden on this parotid PTV, I can just remove these dose objectives. And all of a sudden you'll see my DVH will be strong up here and it'll quickly drop way low. And my parotid will also drop. So that dose will just carve right in here. It'll be easier to see when I'm actually optimizing. 
but this is how I make these structures. If I know in advance, I might want to play around with this dose fall off at the PTV. This is how you can do it. So you don't have to do multiple iterations while you're planning. You can make a decision on the fly in the middle of the optimization. Okay, but we'll, we'll, I'll show you that um, uh, when we actually get to the planning. Adam, quick question on that. Would sure. you make extras, like for example, like you did this like uh, two millimeter, but you, would you do, let's say, if you still cannot get the mean dose and you need to still keep carving out. So would you yep. make some like a four millimeter, a six, you know, like keep going until you get the one that is the most. Ideal? Yeah, so, so that's a good question. So I'll have um, objectives up front from the doctor. So if the doctor says, go as far as you want, as long as you spare the parotid, then I would maybe have three of those structures in there at two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters, or maybe I'd have another one at five millimeters. And I would just keep keep subtracting those PTVs off the optimizer until I reach it. If my doctor says, okay, you, you stop, as long as you, you have to cover CTV, then I would only make those extra structures go until I reach CTV, and then I wouldn't go any further. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're right, uh, Cesar, you can do this as you can create these structures ahead of time so that you can just slowly, slowly subtract off those PTVs until you reach the dose that you need to. Um, so it's very important to have that conversation with the physician before, like uh, if you want yes, yeah. really cover exactly. something and that's your stopping point. But if exactly. you have a free will, let's say, then you can do all these little structures and, until you get the mean dose. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So on a side note, I, I use this on um, um, if I ever do <clears throat> brachytherapy plus an SBRT boost, in order to make the planning incredibly rapid and still have full coverage of my that leftover portion of a, of a high-risk CTV in, a, in brachytherapy, um, then I'll use these these uh, little Boolean PTVs. That way, when I'm optimizing on that, I can quickly look at my breaky dose and I can subtract, subtract, subtract um, these little things one millimeter at a time until I've got um, perfect dose of my PTV and and no organ at risk tolerance overdoses. It's a it's a cool little trick. Yeah, that's good actually. Very good trick. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that. I wanted to show you this before I started planning. Um, move down. Uh, I don't put any objectives on organs at risk. Uh, you'll see I've got some objectives listed, but they're all zeros. Um, I will put objectives on my maxes. Here's a 59.4 max. So again, I do 0% at 3% higher than my um, prescription dose. Then I do this. 5% at 105% just as a visualization. And I might add, I'll probably add some, I can add some extra constraints later. And this is for visualization at zero. Do this for um, my other low, lower CTV. My rings, I do put constraints on. Here's 85% um, of CTV 59.4. That's where it's three millimeters away. So if I do 59, 40 times 85, there's that constraint. And 65% is 3861, there's this constraint for ring two. Um, there is the only organ at risk I put a constraint on is my, are my shoulders. So I'll put a really high constraint, 500. Um, a mean of 100, a max of 200. And that way, at the very beginning, as soon as it starts optimizing, it says, okay, I'm not letting any beans come through this, um, come through the shoulder. So I severely limit the shoulder dose at the very beginning and I keep it there. And you'll see that the optimizer will still do a good job. And the last thing in Eclipse, I've got this normal tissue objective. If you don't have it, it's okay. Your rings will still do a good job. And maybe you would add, you could add like an extra ring if you want, if you don't have this normal tissue. 
I make my own, so I do it manual. Again, same priority as PTV. Distance, um, zero millimeters. The start dose for normal tissue objective in Eclipse is percentage of your lowest um, upper objective. So my lowest, my upper objectives, I've got, you know, 105 at 5%. I've got 103% of my prescription, 0% of the volume. So that's my lowest upper is 103. So 0.95 times 103 means it's actually falling off at 98% of prescription dose. This is just something that's worked for me. I have it fall off to 40% at a fall off um, of 0.2. So it sort of does this curve of fall off. This has worked for me, so I stick with it. Um, again, you can do a more mathematical approach um, at your own center. You can do an optimization. You can use a dose profile tool to actually look from PTV edge um, a few CM away and look how sharp the dose is actually falling off in your plan and modify these values um, based on that. But this, this works for me. All right, I'll have an intermediate dose because my calculation um, algorithm in my optimizer is not as precise as my actual plan um, calculation. So around step four, it will do an intermediate dose using my um, accuros from my planning system. It'll slightly affect my DVHs, and then I can modify them there at the end. So I'll go ahead and start. And you'll see, I, I won't look at my, in this version of Eclipse, I can actually visualize my DVHs. I won't look at these much um, because some of you all won't have this um, to use in your planning system. Everything that I teach, you should be able to just look at your DVH and have a good idea of what's going on. So I'll pause it. So in Eclipse, um, you start um, with these levels and work your way up. It basically goes up in, in complexity. I think, if I remember correctly, it starts out with about seven beams and then slowly adds beams and complexity of the modulation um, until you're up to the, the full arc and, and um, precisely um, fine-tuned MLC patterns by the time you're at step four and finishing up. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to let it, before I ever push any organs at risk, I always let it stabilize. That means it's not working anymore once it flatlines. Then I'll start pushing organs at risk. Now, in this case, you can see my shoulder is super low. I'll make sure later on I'll push this tail, make sure the tail is taken away as well. Um, so you can see I've got almost no dose through the shoulder. Remember, this is entry and exit dose, providing uh, almost nothing here in the shoulder. I'm pretty confident when I copy and paste this on my original data set, I won't see any real changes. All, all I have is avoidance of dose um, through the shoulder area. And just because I, I have this, I'll, I'll show you a visual. You don't really need it because the visual is here, but you can see the dose is being avoided um, through the through the shoulders. It's sort of APPA like. It's still optimizing, so I'm not going to do any organs at risk right now. Again, I'll push organs at risk at each level because this is where I'm doing big MLC changes. So I'm basically shaping where I want my MLC patterns around organs at risk, and then I start fine tuning it as I go. Um, so I want to do the bulk of my shaping here and then fine tuning by the time I really get to, to level three. So I don't have perfect coverage of my PTV. That's understandable. I only have seven gantry angles right now out of an arc and I've done heavy avoidance through these shoulders. I'm pretty confident that when I get to level three and I'm fine tuning MLCs, I'll be able to pull this shoulder up. I'm not worried about that. 
Everything else looks pretty good. And my rings, they're a little high, um, but I think they'll come down as well. Again, this is an initial authorization with big avoidance sectors through here. I'll be able to fine tune these rings. I think by the end, they'll, they'll drop a little bit down for both rings one and two. So here's my upper ring going on and off, my lower ring. Actually, looks pretty good. Maybe I didn't need to separate my rings. Looks like the lower ring not working too hard. You can see external. This is my body structure. That's basically the normal tissue objective. I always like to keep this at the top of the list. Make sure I've got my dose fall off nicely. Notice I'm still not optimizing organs at risk yet. Waiting for this to flatten out. And then we should be able to go through this pretty quickly. We don't have a lot of structures in this case. Um, but again, the same concept applies. If I've done Boolean operators and separated out my PTVs properly, then it, the same process should, wor should work um, even on really complex cases. So I've used the same, same concept on you know, nasopharynx with three SIV and optics involvement and millimeters away from brain stem. And you do the right subtractions, that 5% per millimeter, 10% per millimeter, um, the right subtractions of your max doses of your PTVs, and the same process holds. You would just go through a lot more orgs at risk on each level than I will today. All right, this is flattened out. So I'll start working with my organs at risk. So I'll start with the most difficult ones and the most important for me. So I'll look at here are my parotids with the expansions. Um, so my organs at risk, I put 150 um, for my weighting. And this one started out at 2570. At the beginning, I'll usually drop about four gray, try it out, see how it does. I'll see how this drops and what happens to my PTV shoulder. Drops pretty quickly, pretty easily. PTV shoulder dropped, but it sort of went back up a little bit, not too affected. I'll do the same on this other parotid optimization structure. Adam, I see that, I mean, even though you're already meeting the mean dose of 26, but you're trying to go as slow as possible too, correct? Yes. So actually, um, so these are my optimization structures. Yeah. Here are my actual oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. They're, they're at 30, but you are correct. So the idea is I will push all organs at risk as far as they go, no matter if they've reached constraint or not. So if I reach 26 and I can still push it, it's not affecting my shoulder, I'll keep pushing it. Um, every bit that we get lower on our organs at risk is better for our patient. Right. That's a, a good point. Taser. So this one reached it pretty quickly, easily. I'll drop it um, some more, see what I can do. This one as well. Again, I'm, I'm not looking at this screen. I'm just looking at my DVHs. I can tell what's going on. Rings. This is high dose spillage. This is my PTV coverage. And these are my organs at risk. So this is a whole visualization without even needing this if you don't have this. And you can tell how well it's doing. So if it starts approaching these doses quickly and my shoulders aren't really dropping, that means I can keep pushing it. If it's Staying, like in this case, too gray away, uh, maybe I'll, I'll let up on it a little bit. So while these are working a little bit, I'll push on some of my other organs at risk. Let's do these other structures that are close, these submandibulars. Here, so they're at a mean of 51 right now. Let's drop it again, four gray, see how they do, 150. 
um, waiting. And even though they're really close to PTV 70 and inside of 54, I think we're going to be able to drop them significantly. And my shoulder's not being affected too much. Look how quickly this dropped four gray. It dropped that quickly, which means it achieved it really easily. So I'll drop another four gray. Same with this one. It achieved it really quickly. Drop another four gray, see what it does. Again, my shoulder hasn't really changed from the initial shoulder. Here it dropped a little bit. See if it goes back up. It's starting to go back up. Play with the oral cavity a little bit. The oral cavity is already um, well below tolerance, at least at my institution, it's a mean of 45. It's at 29, but uh, we can push it. Remember, if you can push it, might as well. So I won't push the oral cavity too much further. This might be the only push I do on the oral cavity, just because you've got oral cavity here, parotid here, and your oops, sorry, wrong way, and your submandibular here. So I'd rather push on the submandibular um, glands and, and the, the parotids rather than the oral cavity, which has already met tolerance. Um, so there are times that maybe I wouldn't push it as far as I can, because in, in this case, I'd rather push here and let some dose spill here, push on my parotids and let some dose spill. It's already pretty low. These max do dose objectives, I'll get these later on. They'll be easy to sort of fine tune. I don't really worry about those. My rings are lowering dose, then I'll push these a little bit more later. So these are still, this is two gray away, gray and a half away. I'll leave it um, until I go to the next level. Uh, Submandibular, they got really close. Again, it achieved it really easily. Let's go even further. Another four gray. Another four gray. <clears throat> Let's see, the cochlear could be nothing. Remember, they were up high. I'm not even going to optimize on these. They're up above the, the PTVs. Don't need to worry about these. The larynx we said was inside. Brachial plexus, we'll do these just at the very end. Remember, we want these at around 54 to 55. They're just barely going in. Um, so these we'll do it just at the very end. Spinal cord, brainstem will get, get in just a little bit. Okay, I can probably push a little bit more. I'll go ahead and go to the next step. Um, I'll try and do this tutorial a little bit faster than I, than I normally would. It should take you, I'd say about an hour 15 from start to finish on optimization of a head and neck plan. I guess for cases that, yeah, here, I mean, you have some uh, critical structure that you're trying to say, but for like nasopharynx that you have the optics, the brain stem is going to be an issue and all that. So that's what probably will take longer, but the process yeah. is quite the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're you're right. So for nasopharynx with optics involved, you know, uh, you you might be optimizing on, <clears throat> you know, 20, 25 structures between the organs at risk and the PRVs, the organs at risk with the three millimeter margin. Right. And so you would do the same one structure at a time, let it drop, 
make sure the shoulder's not affected for all of those structures on all of these steps. So yeah, nasopharynx, maybe the optimization time, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. maybe slightly longer, maybe hour and a half, hour 45, but you should have a finished plan at the end of it, which is, which is nice. Yeah. So for nasopharynx, would you use the same two arts beam arrangement, uh, Adam? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would use the same same two arcs for nasopharynx. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I can get really good plans with this, with mm -hmm. just two arcs. Anytime you add an extra arc, yeah, you can probably right. improve things. But if you can get an almost perfect plan with two arcs and still have high patient throughput, which is really important at a lot of centers, you're treating a lot of patients, you want to get them in and out as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. Easier for um, sort of setup and, and everything. Um, so I can usually do two arcs on on almost all plans. Okay. Again, I'll wait for this. To, this has gotten pretty close to leveling out. I won't start optimizing until this levels out, right? because I want it to reach the local minimum in the optimization before I start asking it to adjust MLC somewhere else. So getting closer to that point. I can start again. These parotids, this one's one gray away. Keep dropping this. My actual parotid doses, they're getting close to the 26 mean dose. They're doing well. The submandibulars, they're quite close. The gray whale, drop them even more. Submandibulars, you always, because they overlap so much with the PTVs in general. Or yeah. So you kind of need to be. Uh, you need to pay attention when you drop it because most probably, yeah, it's going to be tough to. Yeah, exactly. But so here's a good thing. So that's a good point as well, Cesar. So I'm optimizing my submandibulars. Not these are just the whole organ, right? Yeah. Without a boolean yeah. operator, so it's included in here, and I'm just using a mean dose and dropping it. Mm -hmm. My parotids, I've got this boolean operator, but you'll see. By the way that I optimize and with these edges contours, I can optimize either way, I'll get to the same conclusion, right? So it's nice to see two different methods. So I don't even really need to use Boolean operators most of the time. I can just optimize on this. Mm -hmm. What will happen is when I um, put extra dose constraints optimizing up on my, my edges contour, so let's go to that one which I'll do later is PTB 54 edges. Here it is here. When I push this shoulder up, it's going to fill in the dose right around these submandibular areas. Right. So yeah. again, it's a, a really cool approach where I don't even need to do Boolean operators on my organs at risk because I just push the mean dose until I see my shoulder start dropping. And then I can use this edges contour, which will make sure that I keep my coverage at the boundaries. Yeah. That's a, a really good point, though. That's a, and that's a good trick, too, because then, same with the parodics. I mean, you're helping a lot with these extra, extra like the booleans that you created, but you could have used the, the whole uh, the contour, basically, because yep. you have those edges and the max, the max PTVs and all that. Yep, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Again, I'm not going to touch my oral cavity anymore. These gotten pretty close. I'll wait another step and push them more. Yeah, just keep 
pushing. And that's, that's pretty good. Again, usually I'd let this flatten out a little bit more, but for teaching purposes, I'll um, go ahead and hit play, let it move to the next level. Three. Yeah, so we just keep playing this game, pushing organs at risk, and then we'll fine tune with MLCs around sort of more maximum dose structures and um, PTD coverage when you get to around level three. Our parotid mean doses, 24 and a half and 25 and a half. So we met them already. We'll just see if we can push them a little bit more. <clears throat> Our shoulder is still super low in dose, which is what we want. All right, let's move to the next step. Again, this, this plan is pretty easy because there aren't that many structures, but the same concept, one structure at a time. I'm looking at shoulder, looking at how close it achieves the goal and how quickly um, allowing you to push it at each level at a time. Again, I'm not going to do anything until I get closer to that local minima again. It just had a jump in error because it added complexity to the um, uh, added some, some extra degrees of freedom, probably some extra interpolation between gantry angles, and now it's fine tuning those MLCs um, back to its local minima. And I can already tell we're getting close to a close to a finished plan, give or take some fine tuning. So these have probably been pushed about as far as they can. I'll do one more push, and that's probably all that I'll do in this plan. These are getting pushed. Okay, actually, I'll show you. Now's a good time to show you that parotid concept. Um, so I'll show you on the DVH, and we can look at it on the display. So here's my right parotid. Here's my 25%. I'm sorry. Here's my 50% isodose line getting about five to six millimeters away. So I know this is pushed about as hard as I can, but I've still got full coverage on my PTV. Again, I can tell this just by looking at DVHs and then I push this as far as I can. If I go to my, here's just that PTV portion overlapping with the broaded. 
if I move this down to zero and zero, for example, you watch it here, you see it dropping, 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 while my parotid drops, drops, drops in dose. You see this parotid dose dropping with this shoulder dropping. So now I've just taken out, if I zoom up here, so I'll show you a visual just because I have it. You see, here's my 100%. It now dipped in to where this contour was and it's allowing, I can push the parotid more if I want. And I can keep dropping this parotid now because I'm not worried about this piece of PTD. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, it's a good visualization. I mean, it's good, important that you also can see it on the DVH. I mean, it's very yeah. clear what's going on. Yeah. If you don't have the, the right visualization on the CT. Yeah, exactly. So that's the concept of it. I'm going to move it back just because in this case, I don't need it. I just wanted to show a visual of how it works. Now you see the parotid will go back up in dose. This shoulder will go back up to full coverage again. And you can see it on the actual screen, uh, full coverage here. So that's the idea of being able to use these sort of slivers of PTV with their own dose constraints. And you can take them off a bit at a time, close to organs at risk in order to drop organs at risk. All right. so. I think this is about done. So I think everything's probably been pushed about as much as it's going to be pushed. Parotids are 24 and a half, and, and you can tell that the parotids have been pushed because it's still a gray and a half away on both of them. Maybe I could push a little bit more, but I'm, I think I'm sort of at the limit now how, how much I'll be able to push them. Again, I can keep pushing. I'll see that this probably won't change much. Maybe my shoulder will drop a little bit. I think I'm, I'm probably um, just about there. It's pretty good. Cesar, I can usually tell about my final plan before I even leave step one and then this will just let the algorithm fine tune things a little bit and then we'll adjust our more of our maxes and our PTVs here. Our rings should be looking a little bit better because they've got more degrees of freedom. You can see the ring two has dropped further than it, where it started. Ring one lower did really well. I've got more degrees of freedom um, now, and it's a pretty simple structure. Uh, this ring got sort of a high hot spot. We'll see if we can reduce that in step three. That probably indicates some spillage around, like probably our parotids or submandibulars. But this looks a lot better than when we started, if you remember, um, just because we got more degrees of freedom now better MLC shapes. So we'll try and chop this max dose a little bit later. I don't need to visualize these organs at risk on here because I can see them here. Same with my parotids. I don't need to visualize them because I can see what they're doing here. All right, moved into step two, a big increase in complexity and degrees of freedom. So this big jump in error, but quickly going down to, um, should be a better plan in the end because I've added um, more degrees of freedom in the optimization. We'll let this level out.
again, still waiting for this to level out. Posterior neck, I didn't add any extra constraints on it. I think my rings have done a pretty good job. You know, if you wanted, depending on what your doctor wants, you could push the mean dose a little bit and just lower dose back there. Sort of see a visualization. I mean, this is 27 gray. Um, it's not too bad. I could lower it a little bit throughout, but it, again, sort of doctor specific. Um, I won't work on it now. Um, yeah, I was going to tell you that because there, we, we have a, in our institution a couple of head and neck doctors that they really like to see that <laughs> break in the posterior neck. And okay. Yeah, but it's, this is great, but sometimes they really want to, we kind of need to put a structure there just to, yeah, like lower the, the dose. For just curious because uh, my doctors don't usually do that. What at your, at, at Memorial, how much do they like to see, say, a max or a mean in there? Like uh, well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I don't know about the mean dose of the truck because depending on how you draw it, because we normally do it right in the middle, but it's like they like to see, for example, the 50% of the isodose going really around. Uh, okay. You know, it's more like a isodose visualization. Uh, okay, interesting. You know what I mean? It's just... Um, and even 30% so going, like making that a little spare. If you can. Okay, interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I sort of missed that boat on this optimization. Mm -hmm. I, I should have done, uh, if I were optimizing for that, mm -hmm. um, I would have done it at the very beginning while yeah. I'm really shifting my MLC patterns. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm just teaching the principles now, I guess. So. The same idea would hold. So if, if you wanted, if your doctors were worried about the posterior neck, me as a planner, I um, I wasn't, uh, my doctors haven't been as um, uh, conservative with that, so I didn't push it in this case. But the concept is there in the planning process. So I, I would have started this um, in level one back here and pushed it around. There's no reason that I, I think we couldn't do that. Um, um, push this around as well. Um, I'm not going to do it at this point just because uh, my plan is already in level two. I mean, I could push it a little bit. Now. Oh, it's, it's, a good, it's good. It looks good, actually. But yeah. like I said, it's, the, it's physician dependent, I guess, the way that they like to see plans in that area. Right, right. Vice versa. So. Um, but you as the planners, you have the, the tools now to modified doses in the same process. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Again, this I would have done early on when I'm shaping my MLC patterns. Yeah, that's important to mention because it's a good, this is you do it in the early process because that, right. you got it then and then that's it, you forget about it. Yep. Um, and, and that's just because of, um, I'm not used to planning with it, so I sort of forgot that that structure was there today. Yeah, that's Okay, so I'll go do the, um, I can put some of these structures on now. I'll fine tune them more in uh, step three. Tails, you can usually cut off pretty low. Um, 
And here you're using the, those expanded structures just to give a little extra buffer. Yeah, exactly. Just to make sure you don't have high doses very close yeah. to the target. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll fine tune these more in step three. You can see it's just a tail. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be able to move that around the structure more in step three. So I'll push these um, objectives up higher. And fine tune those 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 values. The same thing with my mandible and my um, brachial plexus. I'll just make sure those max doses are closer to prescription dose, that we don't just have a, a weird hot spot in there. And as you can see, when I put that posterior neck objective on, nothing really changed. I've already sort of established my MLC patterns. And that posterior neck structure is such a big structure. I would want to really shape those MLCs. I'm getting to the fine tuning of MLCs now. Um, so that's why if I were going to optimize that structure, I do it now on a big structure. I'm not changing much. I had done at the beginning, I could make big changes in my MLC shape. Um, so that's a, a nice example of what happens when you optimize on structures later, especially big structures. So small structures you can optimize later, big structures you need to do early on. I'll go ahead and just get us to step three and we'll fine tune some things. All right, I'm in step three. Now is when I want to fine tune my um, PTB shoulders, these maximum dose structures. So the first thing that I'll do before I do any of that is I want to lock my organs at risk into place. So for each organ at risk, I push them as low as I can. So I'm going to lock them in. I'll put a couple upper objectives right on the DBH. Sorry, wrong structure. The one that I'm optimizing on here. So I'll just lock this in in two places. I'll put something higher than my PTVs, so 300. I should prevent them from moving. I'll do that for each organ at risk that I have already lowered dose on. That way, when I'm Improving my shoulders, I'm not just removing all the work that I did on my organs at risk. Same one. <laughs> one of my colleagues just arrived. We're a busy clinic for a Sunday here. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> You're all there. <laughs> we got a couple, we got a TBI patient and an emergency patient. Uh -huh. 
So you treat that, you treat them on the weekend, or it's just because they are emergency? Um, uh, the emergency we treat just because it was an emergency. TBI, it depends on the bone marrow team and that sort of schedule and the the donor schedule, that sort of thing. So sometimes we'll treat our TBIs over weekends. I see. Yeah. Makes it very fun for physics, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I've locked in all these organs at rest. So hopefully these won't move when I find you in this. So now I'll fix these hot spots again, uh, these max doses. So here's my cord expansion. And my cord, I do both at the same time. And brain stem's already low, but if we can go lower, we will. This fine tuning doesn't really affect much in my plan. See that nice long tail. We should be closer to fifty four. Can't knock that down. There's just a few millimeters in the PTB, so we can knock that out. Brachial plexus, it should be close to 45, 50, or 55. Keep it there. Brachial plexus, right. I'm not worried about the expansions of these because the dose is already um, pretty low. You can if you want. I can put an extra constraint on that. The idea is there. Just yeah, the only you know a brachioplexus is if you have PTB seven is very close to that, then it's when they exactly. and yeah. in, in those cases you will in what, what do you you will carve a little bit the coverage, correct? Yeah, yeah. Typically we'd carve. I would again I would clarify that with the doc before I started planning that we had clear instructions. Yeah. Um, even for PTB sixty. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, they, they might allow some, some cool spots as long as mm -hmm. that, that dose is pretty low. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's true. I'd clarify these with the doctor first. Okay. I'm going to pop this out a little bit later after I fine tune the shoulders. Okay, so first we'll look at our CTV, see if they look good. So I've got 5940 as my prescription. I've got at least 99.7% of my uh, volume getting that. CTD 54. This one's missing it a little bit. Increase this dose a little bit. My GTVs, 100% coverage, 100% coverage, actually a little bit high even. 
I don't even need a myth high. Lower that flight. Too good a coverage. All right, and then I'll just start fine tuning my shoulder. So look at my first what my coverage is, my DVH 54. It's pretty low. You can see it's missing here on the visual as well. Let's look at the edges. That one's low. So let's increase this. And this is basically it. I'm just going to keep increasing the lower objectives and the higher objectives until I make this a little bit sharper and making sure that my external stays working hard. Do you visualize the, for example, the parody where you put those markers, making sure that you're not ruining the yep. uh, yeah, so we, later? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll usually do it a little bit later and I'll see if, if um, anything's happening with these. Right now they're staying put. If I see that the shoulder is just not moving up very quickly, and, and this is starting to sort of drag up slightly, meaning it really wants to move away to fix this, I'll just drag these a little bit less strict. Let the parotid say move up and fix this shoulder. That's a good good question. Mm -hmm. um, so back here. So here's the parotid overlap. It's struggling a little bit. And we'll see the corners. Corners are actually doing pretty well. Moving up slowly. My other ones, I'll see how they, they're doing. 59, 4. So 69 is getting not quite full coverage. 59, not quite full coverage, so I can increase these slightly. I'll do a more after the intermediate iteration. Actually, 59.4 is spot on. Cesar, I'll, I'll be I'll be back in just um, three minutes. Okay, sure. I just got about one second. Of course.
Okay, sorry, I'm back. I didn't touch anything, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so this um, slightly missing 6996. <clears throat> so another thing that I'll sometimes do in cases is um, I can just slightly change these lowers. So you can either keep changing weighting <clears throat> Or I might just slightly increase this a little bit higher dose. Um, <clears throat> 54 dBH, where are we? Sorry. So we're still lacking on 54 as well, so we can increase all of these 54 slightly. Multiple ways of doing it. Um, same thing. We want to. We also want to make sure that our max doses are still okay. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to turn off some of these. So we can look at our. Max doses. So you can see the max here, 105% or 5% hotspot, 5% volume. It looks pretty good. Uh, we'll look at the 59.4 max dose. And it's under 5% hot spot is under 5% of the volume. It looks pretty good as well. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it's got a bit of a tail. Maybe we can just cut that tail off. And the 54 max. This one's a little bit high. That's sort of a big tail. Let's try and improve on this a little bit. Well, the PTB 54 is the is the the one that is going to suffer the most because of <laughs> it's around the. All the critical structures are around that, but uh, yeah, you can always. Exactly. You know, normally the high dose level, if they are very confined within and not close to structures, you, you get good coverage for sure. Yep. 54 is always, or the lowest, let's say, whatever it is. Yeah. So here I've got um, 5850 is 8% hotspot. That's right here. I want to get most of this, most of the 8% almost down to nothing. So some of these hot spots and tails, we can, we can increase this quite a bit pretty quickly. Just see that we don't affect our shoulder too much. Keep an eye on this. Yeah, it's starting to move a little bit. Okay, so I think I'm I'm pretty close where I'm just gonna let this 
before I drive myself crazy. Um, I'll let it go through. I'll let it do the intermediate dose because I'll have to fine tune it again. And then I'll just perfect the maxes and the max doses, the shoulders, and my organs at risk. So I'll let it play through now. But you can tell we're almost there. If you want to cheat and look at the visual here, looks uh, looks pretty nice, quite conformal even around the parotids and submandibulars, without dose spilling out elsewhere. But as I said, we can tell all that from the DVH anyway. Gonna wait for that to flatten out. Oops. I'll wait for it to flatten out, and then I'll hit play again. Let it do the intermediate dose. Uh, from your experience, do you see big changes after the uh, the intermediate doses done in terms of doses to? Um, I don't see that much. Yeah. So in pelvis cases, I see almost nothing because it's almost all just tit, uh, like uh, soft tissue. Mm -hmm. Head and neck, I see a little bit more because of the the bone. Yeah. Um, it's the mother heterogeneity. Oh, um, still, still okay. not much. Yeah. Um, lung, I'll see more, especially if it's like a smaller lung tumor. Mm -hmm. um, but um, not, not big differences, typically. I expect my shoulders might drop slightly after this intermediate dose, and we'll just fix those. And while this is calculating, you can see the reason that we need to separate out these PTVs, that each PTV now has a sharp fall off down to sort of a maximum dose. Again, a sharp fall off, a sharp fall off. If I didn't separate out my PTVs, you'd have these tails that would connect. And now this portion of PTV includes PTV 59 and includes 70, you have this tail. So how do you know how to limit this region if you don't have a separation? And that's when you get hot spots scattered all through your PTV and it's really tough to, then you're chasing hot spots. But if you separate them out, you should have a sharp fall off, sharp fall off, sharp fall off. And uh, usually I try and really limit that 8% um, in each of my PTVs. 100% coverage of my CTVs with prescription dose, 95% of my PTVs covered by prescription dose, um, 
spend a very limited 8% hotspot is typically what I go for. Again, you may have slightly different organ risk constraints or uh, PTV coverage objectives, um, depending on where you work. Okay, so I can see the shoulders, some of the shoulders dropped a little bit. So let me hurry up and fix some of these. And we'll move to a finished plan. So 69. Nine. edges as well. Now I'm wondering if this drops because of one of my submandibular, maybe the left submandibular. So let's look. I was thinking of that, yeah, because it's... Uh, so yep, and you can see that line is starting to creep up, mm -hmm. which means it's really fighting it. So I bet if I move this, Mm -hmm. Give it a little bit of room. Yep. Mm -hmm. My shoulder goes up and my submandibular went up a little bit. And let's just see the other submandibular. That's causing issues too. Maybe slightly here. Mm -hmm. Because there is PTV70 on. There's a smaller part on this side as well, if I remember correctly. So just a slight change in my submandibular dose. I'm getting closer to achieving that. You can look at carotid as well. Slightly. Again, I'm barely changing anything. Just a slight movement. I'll add one more just to cut off that tail slightly. tissue not working as hard. I need to make sure that gets bumped up. I'm not spilling dose elsewhere. Sort of forgot about that. Put my external back at the top. And let's see if I'm getting closer. 95%. 69.70. Almost there. I'll find two of my, put my others, 59. Okay, 5940 is okay. This CTV is pretty close. Like 99% coverage. And I could fine tune all of these as much as I want. I'll try and do it a little bit quicker and take the time. And uh, I'm missing pretty 
it. So let's see, my 54, 59, 40 is almost there as well. That's enough to bump it up. Looks like it is. Got it. Now all I'm left with is just the 54. So I just have to fix that and I should be done. My edges are still give me a problem. It's important to notice that you know now you're fine tuning, so you're you're changing a couple of grades. I mean, you need to do the small increments if you increment the dose. Right, right. Lower, yeah. If you need to know. Would you, if for example, something is giving you trouble, at this point, would you increase the, the benefit, the priorities very high just for something in particular or not really? Like, um, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, yeah that's, that's a good point. So for some of these... I mean, everything um, here, but in case something is like, you're almost there, but it, you can't get it maybe. Um, yes, I, I would do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will bump it um, bump it significantly up. Right. And I don't want to lose track of this body. We're almost there. 5330. Okay. 53.70, I'm, I'm almost there. And I can probably just renormalize an eclipse at this point, which is what I might do, especially for the sake of time. Just see my brain stem some of these things one more time. Chord. So it's good, you know, it's good also to keep the, all the ORs as slow as possible because then you will have a little room to re-optimize if you need to, like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You're not always right there. So. so one question, one question that everybody normally has is, when to stop, no? When do you think, okay, when I'm ready to stop my fine tuning and I'm happy with the plan, 
as it is. And I think very important is, I mean, you need to focus on the PTV coverage or CTV coverage, that's for sure. And then if you think that there is OR, that they're giving you issues for that, then you might need to have a little, a little discussion with the physician because you keep, you know, there probably there is OR that is going to be possible to get it to, and maybe you can go higher a little bit and that's an indication that you can spend another hour trying to get it, but it's not going to yeah. be. So. Exactly. So in this case, I'm, right on the edges of all of these i think i yeah. could probably just normalize right um and eclipse and change that 20 centigrade that i'm sort of missing um so i think these will be okay my 95 percent of ptvs my ctvs are going to get full coverage ptvs full coverage organs at risk are low um my max doses here's eight percent it's quite low I, I think i'm at a pretty good stopping point um, so I'm going to let it play out. I'll recalculate. And, uh, should be pretty good. Again, Cesar, I'm a bit out of practice. Like I told you last time, it's been over a year since I last planned. Uh, um, this is amazing. You've done an amazing plan. <laughs> in such a short time. So I don't think, <laughs> you, I mean, you, you will never, you can tell that you can never forget things. Yeah, and yeah. Happens. Yeah. And I think it speaks more to the, um, just the process. Yes. So yes. all I did, I haven't planned it forever. I sort of forgotten stuff, but if I just follow that process, it should lead me to um, an almost perfect plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, first try. Maybe I'd have to do one more iteration, fine tune something, but I typically wouldn't create additional contours in the fine tuning. I would typically just say, okay, let me just increase some weighting or optimization yeah. um, or there um, just to fine tune. But usually you should get, you just follow the process. You should get pretty, pretty close or, or spot on that first try. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because then if you keep creating more contours at this point, then you come back and it's kind of, you, you can, it's kind of a new plan. I mean, that you're doing, I mean, it's, it's a right, right. modifying contour. So it's not from the beginning, but things may change quite drastically. If yeah. You, yeah. Unless you know how to use those extra contours, because there, there is people, there are planners that they, they are very good at spotting areas that they need to control better with. Just yeah. Make the yeah. Done. Um, MUs aren't super high. I was actually expecting them to be a bit higher. Maybe I didn't do as perfect of a job. So it's modulation factor of 3.3. Um, just renormalize. Barely changed my max dose, which means I, I didn't have to normalize it much. Now let's take a, a look through this, see how we did. Fields off. Okay. Oh. 
take a look at CTV for 54. Looks like my CTV is fully covered. Yep, CTV is fully covered. I will look at 95%. Quite nice. See, not even any spillage around the submandibulars. No spillage around the parotids. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. So if you notice, it's a little bit less conformal, only down here when we get to the shoulders, right? Right. That's where you, yeah. And that's okay because it's okay. more APA. I'm avoiding all of this and that. Right. You have yeah less arcs basically working. So that's okay for me there. If I wanted, I, I could have tried to push a little bit more just on this inferior ring, but I'm okay with that. And it gets nice and conformal out here and no spillage of dose. I'm very happy with it. Now we'll go to the uh, next PTV, which is 5940. And we'll look at this CTV. Where is it? That should be here, this blue one. Uh, this dark blue is the CTV, which is covered. So you can see throughout the rest, oops. So this might be my second iteration. I might have to do one more iteration because I don't like that on that last slice, but 5940 doesn't exist really anywhere else in my CTV 54, except for those two top, top and bottoms. So I might just one more iteration to get that out, but you can see the hot spots are nice. So 5940 divided by 5400, that's my 10%. So basically no 10% anywhere. Uh, full CTV coverage, uh, 56, 5643, this is my 95%. Um, fully covers this PTV. I think that's about 5% of the other PTV. 4.5% we see some spillage. So we look at 69.96. That should cover my GTVs. Fully it does. Almost 100% coverage of PTV. We'll look at 95%. covers my PTVs perfectly without any spillage into my um, lower dose PTV. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. And now we'll look at say 50% isodose line, uh, 2700 compared to PTV 54. If you look around the oh, carotids, so here it is around the submandibulars. On this one, looking at really sharp fall off to 50% isos line. Same with this one, really sharp fall off of dose. We've really pushed it. And the parotids pushed pretty well. Let's see what that fall off is. You can see it's pretty flat because I used that extra five millimeter margin mm -hmm. to make that a little flat and a little less V-like. Uh, it's almost seven millimeters. So maybe could have been pushed a little bit harder actually, um, but still pretty good. Uh, okay. okay, we can look at our DVH. Or maybe we'll look at 40 gray. Make sure that stays bending around the brainstem and spinal cord. It does a nice job, nothing dipping in there. Okay, so we'll take a quick look at our DVH and we'll call it a day. Now we 
Good. Here's our DVH 54. We've prescribed it that way, so it's 95. The CTV, 100% coverage, basically. Mm -hmm. Here's a 59.40. Here, I got 96% coverage, so that's good. Mm -hmm. CTV is getting 100% coverage. Here's 69.96. 96% of the PTV is getting that, and the GTVs are um, getting above prescription. So all my PTVs are good. My hotspots are all pretty good. And let's take a look at our organs at risk. Mandible, 57 in a 54 PTV. It's okay. And I'm not worried about it because it's such a low organ at risk. I mean, such a low PTV. Man, uh, oral cavity is quite low, as we expected, 26. Now let's take a look at our parotids. Left and right are both 27. Um, again, maybe this would be a second iteration, get it down to 26, or maybe I would cut into my PTV slightly. But again, I think I could do a little bit better. I was at six or seven millimeters between 50% ice dose lines. I could probably drop that down to five to six millimeters slightly reduce this low tolerance. I just missed it. Not bad. Maybe the doctor's okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, my shoulders, again, they stayed really low. Okay, so that's the last thing I would do. So my submandibulars, we pushed them as low as they could. They got to 39 each for mean doses, best that we could. Um, so the last thing that I would do I won't do a full analysis, but um, remember I said these shoulders had that extra um, density attached to them. So I would pull out my registered image. And just copy the plan to it. So this is my original um, CT set. And I would just, okay, so I've got a, I've got high Hounsfield unit numbers in here. I'd have to copy out, but that's all I would do. Just copy and paste it to my original data set, recalculate. In this case, I need to contour out my high density um, mm -hmm. for my accuracy in order for it to calculate. Um, and then I would just recalculate on this in that way. Any fluent that actually was going through the shoulders is actually accounted for in this without that extra PM of material there. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Here you have the right, the outer, the body outer without yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It should, shouldn't but, change it almost yeah. at all because the, the dose is You do it at the very end, that's it, and recalculate. Yeah. 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 And just for time's sake, since it shouldn't change almost any, I had such low dose. Um, uh, I'm not going to go back and, and recontour those things. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, yeah. Any questions on, on this? Oh, I think it's perfect. Yeah, I like that. It's a very, uh, very thought technique. And uh, it, it all makes sense, actually, because you can keep controlling everything by just looking at the DVH. And, yeah, it's great. Okay, awesome. So Cesar, thanks for your time. You've you've done like six of these uh, tutorial videos. You you're amazing, and and three or four PowerPoint presentations. You you deserve some sort of award. <laughs> I'm thank no thank you for taking your time actually for showing. This is where I think this is the most uh, educational part when you have these tutorials because. You can see, I mean, on the lectures, you can explain things, but it's nice to have this as a compliment. It's great. Okay, well, great. Perfect. All right, thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon. Yes, thank you. Okay.